All right. Good evening, guys. We're live on Facebook. How you doing? Hi, everyone. I'm, I'm doing welcome. all right. As all right as can be, I guess. Yeah. How about you guys? Um, yeah. Uh, lots has happened. Uh, I'm okay. Uh, uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank you, all of you that have been with us since, I don't know, like since the time David and I started, and even more so since the time that the, the, the war, we kind of essentially like kicked into the second phase with, you know, the, with the addition of Richard, because yeah, that tells me that you're interested, that you're concerned, that you want to be uh, informed, and uh, we do the best that we can to inform the community that is listening to us, which is becoming broader and broader, by the way. We're noticing the statistics, and, you know, happy that you can do this live with us on air currently or after and i'm always in deep gratitude for you to do that to the, the for those of you that are you know care enough to care and to listen and to understand uh the complexities that are going on in armenia currently with the biggest topic right now being the election that just transpired in on sunday yeah well said man uh, I'm, I'm doing okay uh you know i feel like sunday is just a reminder that we have to keep our resolve. We have to keep our resolve. We have to keep working. We have to keep pushing. We cannot turn our back on Armenia, uh, no matter who's in office. We have to work harder and we have to make sure that we are there for our homeland as much as we can. And we have to stay informed. So that's why we're here. Right. Right. Yeah. I agree. I agree. I think, you know, I've heard some feedback from some people like how, you know, over the past handful of months, how can I help? What can I do? How does this and I, you know, I just think that we're all called to do something at some point, and we just got to follow that and reach out to people like, you know, the three of us, uh, or for for those of us, the us three, it's reaching out to people in the organizations that we're part of, and and finding ways of, um, you know, uh, just contributing. And I think that's what most of us are trying to do, right? So, yeah, we'll uh, see. I mean, all I can say is that this this weekend. Uh, it's I, in some ways offers more questions than answers. Uh, I don't know. You know, we'll we'll we'll, we'll get into it. Uh, but obviously, the big topics today are the post-election coverage, um, the fact that there are still Azeris on Armenian territory. Uh, those are our big two. Uh, and then we're going to start to cover some of the other news items that are relevant to all the other things that are going on. So um, I don't know. Where do you guys want to start? let me uh we'll start with the first bit but let me kind of essentially i always like to take it back assuming that anybody that's logging in right now may or may not know exactly what is happening at all exactly so right. on sunday uh uh what do you call it? june 20th armenian uh, uh armenia had snap elections why snap yeah we needed to readjust the, what's going on in the country essentially the country went through a calamity which was the 44-day war that was brought to our uh to our region uh under the veil of covid and all sorts of un resolutions not to uh, start any kind of uh wars during the time but our enemy is such that it doesn't care for any uh resolutions or anything and once that war started we had ca catastrophic ca catastrophic results results that seemingly also allude to a lot a lot a lot of failures of the administration's ability to either wage the war, defend the nation, and or, uh, you know, kind of navigate post-war issues, such as uh, Azeri, uh, what do you call it, troops coming into our land. So anyways, um, and there was obviously a, a big turmoil, especially, you know, with the culmination of the nine points of capitulation that were not explained to the Armenian nation in any way whatsoever, only post-factum. Oh, by the way, I did this. Right. Um, seemingly, Richard, David, and I have an opinion on the administration, and you obviously, if you listen to our shows, understand where I stand most, most certainly, although I do not like to persuade or like push my, my, uh, my opinions onto my other counterparts. However, we would like to go through what happened in the elections as, uh, as rationally and as kind of conclusively, although a lot of things you will notice are kind of inconclusive. So that is where we are. There were yeah. elections. Um, those elections were going to be boycotted at first, but then the, the political parties pulled together and said, you know what, if there is a transition, we need to be part of it and we need to participate in these elections. Um, and seemingly the elections could or could not be, uh, may, may or may not be uh, done correctly uh, as it stands right now. Let's jump in. I hope that explains a lot. Um, and I know I didn't cover everything. 
Well, you know, the other thing I'd like to just sort of lay out before we even get go, going even further is that, you know, this is this is not your typical news outlet. You know, Arach Media is, a, is you know, you know, some, a few guys getting together to try and collate the news and put it out to everybody in a way that is digestible, that uh, it's reasonable to understand. We try and highlight some key points. And the truth is, is that we're adults. We have our own opinions and we're not a... Um, you know, an unbiased news source. We try to be unbiased. And I think to Greg's point about what direction we're leaning on this, if you do see some uh, anti-administration, uh, uh, you know, content, uh, I would say, at least for my own part, I can't speak for you guys, but for my part of it is that, you know, I'm looking for the truth in things. And it, it just so happens that, you know, where there's smoke, there's usually fire. And if, and if things point to a certain... You know, if things point in a certain direction, you can pretty much guarantee that that's gonna that that's the way it is. So we try and leave that open, uh, you know, to be as as balanced as possible. But you know, you, you know, we see what we see, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, well said, well said, guys. Obviously, we have opinions as well, and our opinions were, you know, we're gonna share our opinions. But to to both of you guys' points, of course, we're gonna we're we are here really to serve the entire community. So. And we work with the entire community and we always will. Uh, so, um, yeah, with that said, we do still have opinions. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah. But also uh, our, our, our job is not to stay silent when things right. are not rightfully, they don't seem right. With that being said, let's jump into uh, what happened on Sunday. Right, exactly. Yeah, that sounds good. All right, well, uh, the first article that we've got, um, you know, has to do with some of the uh, did, did you want to show the uh, Armenia votes uh, link first? Yeah. Well, well, we can. So everyone can see the, so that they could see how the, the breakdown of all of the, the regions, right? The electoral regions. Is, is that what you're referring to, Rich? Yeah. yeah. The first yeah, link yeah, I've got is, yeah, a good place to start. is of the, uh, the live updates. Um, and so this is sort of what was happening, you know, and we can thank uh, the Armenia report. Oh, or excuse me. Yeah. Uh, you know. So no, this is uh, let's see here. Sorry, man. I'm trying to get to the Zoom. Um, okay, no, this is yeah, this is EVN. They, they're keeping a detailed timeline um, of what's been happening, uh, and they're actually giving the list of all of the observers that were there during the election. Uh, and now, keep in mind, the observers were from uh, European, uh, American, uh, Democratic nations, um, and they said supposedly they said not supposedly they did say that the election was held uh and was well run uh but then they they condemned the uh the rhetoric that was used among the con the not contestants the uh opposition forces if you will the, those that are that were running for office uh and, and we saw that the the party very quick the, the the campaign very quickly became very uh, aggressive and um, and not uh, not very pleasant, uh, and that was including the the current prime minister himself was uh, was using rhetoric that was not would not be considered appropriate for right. the campaign. Yeah. And so, what can we talk about? What can we say about the this international election observation mission? Yeah, I mean, so the OS OSCE uh, among other organizations were there to monitor. Obviously, the OSCE um, is the combination of well, the Minsk group, excuse me, is part of the OSCE. Uh, but uh, Greg, perhaps you can help give some context on that as on this as well. They, you know, they, they gave a statement on their findings of, of observing the elections on June 20. And again, they're saying yeah, that, so yeah. Unfortunately, again, the, with, with the preamble that we have uh, in terms of what my opinion on OSCE and every foreign media is, is also in the context and the, uh, uh, so the idea was that seemingly, seemingly right seemingly the campaign and the results are uh seem to be in accordance with a democratic res you know uh right. process but we all know uh again that the united states and its state department officials flew into armenia prior to the elections the uh uh, Blinken's, I, I believe, like undersecretary uh, flew in. Um, so, gentlemen, when you ask for my thoughts on what this is, the, yeah, the OSCE is a governing body 
Um, the Central Committee of Armenia is a, what, electoral committee as a governing body. The United States and the West are, you know, uh, are entities that have certain interests that are of, often cloaked as if democracy is their number one objective. But you know, we've seen what happens in the aftermath of democratization right. of other nations. And in reality, that really nullifies, in my opinion, anything that the European Commission OSCE who couldn't care less about the demise of the Armenian minority, majority actually in Artsakh. Um, so I don't know. Um, I don't know if yeah, I'm going I mean, on, a, on a, yeah, I just, yeah. I just really don't, you know, like it does not sit well with me what they say and how quickly they say it when there are things that they could have said at a, at an earlier time. Okay. Right, right, so right. it's, it's everything being said is always to push an agenda that's anti-Armenian, including the uh, certification of the elections of a man that's tanking the entire thing. And we can go into that. In Man, we will. Oh, we will. We yeah. will. We will. We will. I mean, so what I'm hearing is, is that even though uh, there are, you know, verified sources that suggest everything is that that certify or, you know, that everything is on the level, there's something about it that doesn't that doesn't seem right. It doesn't feel yeah. right. Um, you know, there was talk about, and maybe we'll get into that in a little bit, but, you know, the difference between, uh, you know, the rallies between these candidates and, and, and you know, Korchardians was much larger. And, yeah, right. he, you know, he didn't yeah, we'll vote. get there. Yeah, we'll get into that, right? Yeah. I mean, there's, and actually, Kocharian's party, of course, is contesting the re, the, the results of the election, and we'll they actually have submitted. Well. We'll explain that as well. Yeah, we'll so get there. Now, but real quick, so just so everyone knows, guys, what the OSCE is. It's the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe. They had monitors there. U.S. State Department, Greg, as you mentioned, and Rich, had monitors there for the election. They all essentially congratulating Armenia, like you said, Greg. They're congratulating Armenia for what appears to be a democratic election. We're going to get a little into more detail, though, on some things that don't seem to add up. Right. So. Um, right. So definitely. we had, uh, you know, we, we, we had the OSCE. We, we also we just we just showed that the, the U.S. flew in and, and, and certified it. But you want to talk about this interesting link about the, the elections? David, do, do you want to give any background on this or do we just want to get right into the actual um, link itself? Uh, which one now the map the map or the uh the map yeah uh, <laughs> do we want to share there with everybody what it what it said I, what I, yeah. I, I don't know i don't think it's necessary but uh, okay yeah it's okay it's okay uh just because it's real it's very confusing but uh but you know as everyone can see this is the the official election commission central election commission for republic of armenia just everyone gets an idea this these are the different electoral regions of the country okay so you can mm -hmm. see how there's more in the higher population areas right greg like around yedevan there's more districts uh whereas as you go further out there are much larger regions right greg and that's probably because of population i would imagine right so mm -hmm. um but yeah. this gives you an idea of of the actual electoral map um for the country um and the results shall we get into and we and by the way for our english or our armenian viewers you can actually view it in either language should yes you wish so yes yes they can have an important uh important little feature here so, yeah so, uh, so obviously let's we can jump into the results right the results are and david i think you pulled the uh, great stats or uh, i think uh, the, the results are in with a small, narrow margin, uh, the current uh, uh, prime minister won the majority uh, and is well, going to have. Yeah, I mean, like the. It was a landslide victory, according to the election results official. Mm -hmm. Right. But to what your point is, Greg, the, according to the Armenian Constitution, the, you, the, the party that wins needs a 54 percent majority to claim the majority victory, according to the constitution. Pashinyan's victory, and Greg, you pointed this out on the day after election, Monday, when we were finding out the results, right? He won, Pashinyan won, his civil contract party, won by 53.92%. 
That's not 54%. It's short by 0.08%. It's kind of odd, but then he is still winning. He's still getting the official victory. Is it just rounding up? Can they just round it up? I don't know. Uh, but apparently that's well, what's happening. Uh, well, yeah. You know, without going into speculation and uh, right. you know, not knowing some of the hard, hard facts, I want to say that the other discrepancies that we, we saw in the election itself, if we're discussing the results, is that early on we saw um, issues that the current, so essentially let's, let's put it this way. There are three blocks that went into, that are going to be going into the parliament because they received enough of a vote to be in parliament. Exactly. Majority is the current uh, my, my step coalition, which is the led by um, Nicole Washington. Opinion, right. the darling of the West. Um, then there's obviously the strong man, as they call them, or the former president, the second president of Armenia, Kocharyan. which is uh, Robert Kocharyan's um, Hayastan Dashing alliance. And then finally, it's the Ser Sarkisian's, uh, uh, well, and that alliance includes uh, the three, three coalitions, it's Robert Karcharian, ARF, Dashnak Sutsun, and a newly formed uh, uh, party, hastily formed party as a result of what's going on in, in the south of Armenia. And that's kind of like the Sunni party, okay, um, representing that region. Um, so that was the second runner up with, I think, 20, like, like the 21, second, 21 uh, 21.04 percent. Yeah. Um, and then lastly, with, I believe, 7 percent or, or so, uh, no, 5.23 5. percent, 5. which is also technically you needed 7 percent to be able to secure seats in the parliament. Yeah. Well, we but, don't know. We don't know what exactly is it, like. Right. I get we, right. we know the, the, the drop down, but they uh, it's 100 percent that that party will be a representative. Yes, yes, yes. They rounded him them up as well. Uh, they mm -hmm. gave them because they were the next one with five point two three percent. They will have seven seats in the parliament. Kocharyan mm -hmm. will have twenty nine seats. Mm -hmm. Pashinyan will have seventy one seats uh, as it stands right now. One hundred seven seats in the assembly. Sorry, Greg. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is the the seeming result of it. Um, there are all sorts of, and you can see one of the the press conference that I stayed up all night listening to is Kocharan essentially explaining why they are going to mo they are going to challenge and actually today I believe there was a second bit that came out where uh, the Ser Sarkisian's coalition is going to join the challenge as well um, to oh, wow. the, to, okay. yeah to the to the to this to this uh, election um, what are the methods how I don't know but there are yeah. the grievances are the grievances are many okay right but we can we want to get into we want to get into the the grievances that Kocharian has has filed but their Kocharian is taking it up with Armenia's constitutional court yeah uh, so they have officially done that to challenge the election results uh this David, sounds there, familiar there are, there are six mm -hmm. items right that they are yes challenging why don't you go it, ahead sure I'll go through it right now so and I, these are very these are very very concerning uh they could be very damaging obviously if any of these are uh are true um and we have yet to find out right so and by the way i've also been told by someone very close friend of ours uh from armenia uh, that they are in the process of recounting um but yet we have yet to find out exactly what's what's happening there and what the results of that is um so it sounds very it sounds very familiar guys to our own uh, elections that we had at the end of last year uh, one quick pause yeah this one quick yeah. pause is this. We always want to know what was up in the, in the mix of this. Of this, uh, What were the platforms? Coach Adan, not understanding what just happened the last 44 days, his ties with Russia, the only guarantor of our sovereignty and security, um, and the, the weakening, this almost like a, a complete, uh, what do you call it, degradation of the Armenian armed forces both de facto and in you know in reality and and in theory as well right seemingly there's a thousand other troops so he ran on the pl platform of Armenia's strength security mm -hmm. security Armenia's uh, uh, electoral campaign was very very confusing at the say the least uh, his was mostly a dogfight with the Nachkin Ner the the previous guys as he would call them. 
um, which is both Sarkisian and Kocharian. Although, if we're going to put all the Nachkins together, which means the previous guys, Nachkin, uh, Levon Terpetrosian some, somehow wasn't ever mentioned, even though he's the he's where Pashinyan started his political career from. And the guy has very, very anti-Armenian viewpoints, if you want to ever go into that. So that was the platform. We had, we, had, we had one guy talking about the security and the need to strengthen ourselves, figure out what's going on with the, with the Azeris and how to move forward, right? How to rebuild the army and how to... And the other guy was uh, predominantly uh, uh, on the campaign trail, going into very, very, very uh, negative, almost street hooligan style uh, rants about, you know, you remember this, I remember that. And also wielding the 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 uh, a hammer, which is uh, right. I don't know if Richard, you're a, you you're a musician. You remember Pink Floyd, right? The Wall, the the movie, the Wall. Like there was a, the the hammer. Uh, I know it, it's it's uh, in Soviet in Soviet culture. It, it's it's the working man's uh, what do you call it uh, uh, symbol, but also like <laughs> fascists use that as well as right. a, as, a, as yeah. an authoritarian yeah. like. We will bang the order into place. You know what I mean? Right. Like, and Greg, and... to give the context, Pashinyan, mm -hmm. late in the campaign, right? Well, I guess the campaign was only a month long in Armenia, right? But very late in the process, he goes, we went, we're we going to move from a velvet revolution, of course, referring to how he came to power in 2018, overthrowing the former president, Serge Sarkisian, who was running and is now, his party got the third place. Uh, overthrowing him peacefully with no violence, right? Velvet Revolution then, to now wielding a hammer, saying now we are the Steel Revolution. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually, you know, Freedom House and the Ombudsman, Armin Ombudsman, have all, you know, really criticized those that rhetoric as well from him. Pause, so anyway, pause, pause right that, there, because yeah. we can juxtapose it with everything else we just said. But I don't sure. remember seeing anything from the U.S. State Department, European Union, or yeah. OSCE that have now certified the elections. That's the a good fact point. that a, a man seemingly in authoritarian and dictatorial nature yep. is, uh, you know, wielding a hammer saying that we're going to nail this now. Um, mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, uh, even when he was accepting his victory, he, there was a uh, there was a mention of like the the the, the dictatorship of law. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, and, I mean, and he presented, well, I mean, he presented Greg, a, a plaque. He presented a plaque, the steel victory plaque mm -hmm. go ahead right. sorry well greg you know that you know america's outrage over authoritarian rule is only applied when that authoritarian rule doesn't somehow benefit them so absolutely <laughs> right yeah. i mean that's the only reason like like that's, when yeah. when saddam hussein uh quit being you know a lapdog for the u.s against iran all of a sudden he was enemy number one when uh Gaddafi was was you know wanted to get off the dollar all of a sudden he was enemy number one so you know america is really really willing we are, we i see this as a, as a privileged american right but america is really willing to like entertain authoritarians exactly. as long as they don't piss off america yeah we yeah. have no problem uh like i don't know, going you know hell bent on trying to like subdue iran sure whatever there's like irregularities of democracy in that country but we are in bed with saudi arabia which oh. officially has no don't know democracy completely <laughs> whitewashed a murder inside a you know yeah. inside the the you know you know so, yeah look look guys why don't we get into the six points that kocharian Please. is presenting because Please. again they're very damaging uh again if any of these are true uh, we have yet to find out, uh, but it, I would think that they're all very damaging. Any one of them would be. So number one, th these are the six points that they put forth to that are ch in, the, in this of official formal challenge of the election results. Number one, a non-competitive electoral in environment was created. In administrative resources were used extensively by the current government and apparent acts of electoral intimidation. Electoral intimidation took place. Now, by the way, any one of these, we could probably do a whole episode long on what this means, right? right so right. we're going to do the best we can to get through this. Power outages. This is extremely fishy, okay? Power outages occurred in many polling stations as soon as ballot counting started, with entire communities in different regions impacted, including in the Armavir, Lori, Chirac, 
Aragatsun. How do you say it, Greg? Aragatsun. Aragatsun. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, provinces. Bro, no okay. Entire power outages in those provinces. Okay. Right when when uh, counting started. Why? What's going on? What was that for? The present number three. The presence and voting by a large number of non-residents in regions was registered in many polling stations, which provide grounds to conclude that there was a system in place for falsification by mobile groups. Very strange. And this is also very reminiscent. It's called, remember, it's called like in America, like, you know. Exactly. It's, it's, uh, like we okay. you know, vote early, vote won. often. Exactly. Vote early, so, vote often. So three more, and these are a little bit shorter, okay? It is, it is an irrefutable reality that the armed forces were overtly directed to vote for the incumbent government. Greg, I think you were telling me something about that on election day or right at our election day, which was 12, 12 hours. Like in you. other words, if you're in the military, you need to vote for the status quo. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, look, let's, let's, let's level set a couple of things. Uh, people and institutions knowingly there are, there are, there are, and it was done in every case. It was done in, 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 in previous presidents. It's done all throughout the Soviet bloc. It's done all in, in many. If you work for a government ent entity, you are actually like softly or sometimes <laughs> like bluntly. Like, can you imagine, for example, Gavin Newsom, uh, for those of you that are in California, going out to every government worker, UC professor, Cal State professor, junior college a professor and saying and and janitor and uh, workers and saying you must vote for me okay right that, right now that is that is something that happened uh, previously and prior to the beginning of the election however on election there was the addition of armed forces being told to go into right. places right and vote. right, so, right. And so david what were the other two points the, that, the, that the, needed to be made there's two more although just to close the loop on that one about the the military I do think it's interesting how that one specifically says it is an irrefutable reality. There is, it is an irrefutable reality. So that one, <laughs> we're driving that one home even more. All right, the final two. Uh, number five, there is a deep suspicion that, elect, that election was rigged, which from the onset prevents objective results. That one, I'm not sure. We'll see, okay? The sixth one, final one. In some communities... There were warnings about cases of veiled electoral bribery by the government. So these are the six points that Kocharian and, uh, and his, his uh, campaign have put forth um, challenging the results of the election. We have yet to see, and who knows how long this is going to take now um, to, to come up with any kind of conclusive result. But there they are. Wow. Well, I mean, it sounds like there are some pretty serious allegations being levied. Uh, the question is, how, they're, how are they going to shake out? Um, and, you know, I mean, it's not surprising that someone who's in power wants to stay in power. That, that can't be surprising to anybody. Of course. Uh, of course. You know, I... I, I it, it has been interesting to see, though, that, that this person, and we've talked about it for, what, seven months now, almost going on eight months almost, that the person that lost the war and was called by the people through protest by official organizations by his own military leaders by both sides of the church by even agbu to resign has held on to power to this long to now be reelected in what appears to be a very very sweeping way uh anyway well, i mean i think you know the listen i don't know exactly what happened i mean it looks weird it feels weird it probably is weird and I, and I think that there's something to be said about the lead up to it. In other words, the guy completely resisted, I'm talking about Pashinian, completely resisted, no, I'm not going to give up. No, I'm not going to, I'm not going to resign. No, I'm not going to. And he did that for quite some time, like at least a couple of months. And then all of a sudden was like, okay, fine, I'm going to resign. That's it. I'm done. And you know what? We're going to force a snap, snap, snap election. And so you know, in 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 my head, it 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 almost does seem like there was a plan B being hatched, and I don't know exactly what that is. I, I, mean, I, that I, sounds... have to, I have to agree with you, and honestly, guys, uh, both together with me and those listening to us, um, 
never in I have foreigners and it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing talking about this. Totally embarrassing. No one understands how this guy even has the audacity to show his face, even if none of those things were were true. You were it was on your watch that a nation lost thousands of boys yeah. and land. And yeah. like you're still even in the running. Right. So it literally anybody, anybody I try to cliff notes this to and explain, they go, Oh, and and he's still running? Oh, yeah, he's not just still running, he's got a he's got the entire, I don't know, newly, you know, resettled to Armenia diaspora support of uh, you know, because there is this right. shadow of he's not the previous. The previous was the worst ever. You know, we we regardless. We, 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 we just had a, uh, um, you know, a viewer uh, make the remark that it's amazing that the military, with so many POWs abandoned, would vote this way. And but, I would well, agree uh, with that. I would right. agree with that. I understand. I understand, Richard. I understand. But also, let's also uh, understand what that is. You're an 18-year-old boy, predominantly, right? A man that was, who probably has cousins that died in the war, right? For sure. And you are following orders, so I have no issues with the men, with the military. I have issues with those that gave those orders. Okay. Yeah. So I agree. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. I mean, I mean, and so to to clarify for the viewer, um, what what I understand, maybe maybe you could help underscore this, is that it wasn't just that that the military voted this way; it was that they were told to vote this way. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you. According it to these like challenges. The military... Yeah, yeah. According, absolutely, according absolutely. Challenges. Yeah. Anyways, let's uh, let's keep going. Um, it's... Well, well, look, uh, this is a good segue um, to uh, the item G on our list, Rich. The Armenian Alliance, Kocharian's party, they, they're challenging, but while they're challenging, they are still going to make sure that they're taking up their seats in the parliament. Um, yes. that's probably wise, right? That way they can at least make sure they have some opposition in there, right? Um, and I think it's interesting, it's, it's important to note also that uh, Dr. Chun has regained seats in the parliament now. They've been out of the parliament for several years now. Uh, I'm not sure, Greg, you might know exactly how many years it's uh, been. Uh, it, since it, the Ser Ser's times. During Ser's times, they were one of the yeah. very final uh, elections during the Serge, uh, period of the Republican Party, they lost right. all, all their seats. Got it. Got it. Now, so that now they're said, back. Actually, you, you make you, you bring up a good point. Sorry, I don't think it's on our list. But another thing that is fishy here, and it's very weird. There are two people I'm not a fan of. They had a big blocks inside the the the, the previous uh, uh, parliament. And there was uh, Marukian's, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, mm -hmm. party. And Gagi Tsarukyan's party, which had, had like a you know a prosperous Armenia block, which are completely uh, erased off the off the map now. Yeah. Now I understand things can happen, opinions can happen. Um, new players came into play, such as Kocharyan and even Levon Terpetrosyan and a lot of part. But it seems to me that something as big as Bargavach uh, Hayastan, uh, which is Gagi Tsarukyan's party completely dissolved right yeah. had not zero like one percent something two percent right and and somebody as coach as, as pashinyan kind of dropped a little bit but not but not significantly you know what i mean like i don't know political analysts like there's so many things that you can say here and they, they allude to so many like discrepancies and and just foul play well and, you know yeah. what i'm i'm just i i have to say something before we tee up the next uh, topic, or at least part of this topic. And that is that, that it is imperative that if you are living in a, in a country where you have the right to vote, if you don't, you are effectively throwing away the decades of work that got us all the ability to do that. And in our case, the three of us, our parents, moving from one country to another to give us the opportunity to be in a place where we can vote and, right. and we can or participate in, in and it, people who, you know, listen, I get it. Uh, dealing with politics is a big pain in the ass and it is really difficult. It's really arduous, it's challenging and it's aggravating. But that is the grinding that has to happen in order to produce a free society. And so if you're not focused on voting, if you're not focused on the people who 
who literally have control over the way our lives shape, uh, then you're abdicating any uh, any role in your own liberation. And so I commend all the people who actually did vote in Armenia because the margins are really slim in some cases. As a matter of fact, uh, David, you brought up, uh, and I'm going to show it in a second, um, that the Russian news agency TASS is reporting that that right. that, that he lacks, that Pashinyan lacks a 0.08% of the votes in order to legitimately form a government. So yeah, to your point yeah. earlier, we're, are we saying that now we just round up if we're close? Because that just means that you effectively just added, you know, thousands of votes. And, and, and by the way, with the recount happening, there are there are reports that Kocharan's party keeps gaining. And I right. would say that right. if he keeps gaining with the recount, there's only one party that must be losing it, which is pushing it. So I don't well, Of course. Like, yeah. Right. So so here's here's the here's that article, just just so that you can see. Um, you know, yeah. on one hand, you have many news agencies, especially in the West, congratulating, saying, oh, well, you know, OK, this is a done deal, slam dunk. Um, but even TASS is like, wait a minute, 0.08%. Now, right. And by know, the way, Rich, thank you for bringing this up. By the way, not to cut you off. I'm sorry, man. CEC, that's the Central Election Committee, if I'm not mistaken. So mm -hmm. it's interesting to see that the Russian news agency, which, by the way, Putin, Putin has already congratulated Pashinyan, by the way. Uh, but the Russian news agency, as of June 21st, reported it this way. I just think it's very interesting to see that. But go ahead, Rich. Sorry, man. No, I'm, no, I'm... no, nothing. I, I think that's I think you're 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 spot on. And I would say, you know, it is interesting that the, that the Russians are doing it because obviously, you know, on some level, the Russians are really the only protectorate of Armenia right now. Yeah. Um, but even they have and, a, and their interests in the caucus. That's right, right. That's right. That's they're right. They're not like they're not completely, yeah. you know, uh all about Armenia. They just are like they, you know, we are right. Uh, yeah. An explosion just happened out by outside my house. Oh shoot. Yeah fireworks man. Well yeah it's that time of year, you know. Um yeah. Right. Well um so um, well, yeah. go ahead, Greg. Sorry, go for it. No, no, please, please. Well, the next one, Greg, if I, you know, is so when we talk about Pashinian winning, um, right. you know, the obvious answer to first of all, let me just back up a second. It, it it has become sort of the new sexy to meddle in elections. It has become like okay, well, we'll just let the people think that they voted and they they actually did something, but we're going to hedge things one direction or another. And so you always have to ask yourself, who stands to benefit from uh, a, an election going one way or another? In the case of America, who would stand to benefit from a Trump victory? Well, there's a whole lot of people that would stand to you know to win, and that would be a lot of the money people, and that would be people like Putin and 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 others. So without diving into that too far, I would just divert and say. Who stands to benefit from a Pashinian victory versus who stands to win from a Kocharian victory? And we all know that many of the people that are currently actively against us were fearful of a Kocharian win. So Absolutely. if you if you if you put that umbrella up and then you see, well, okay, so now Pashinian won, who who could have orchestrated that? Who could have had that? Who could have helped make that happen? Right. It's a great so, question. And uh, without yeah. speculating, you know, we'll just let, I guess, the imagination answer that. Or we can let the Instagram. And yeah. although, although it's very fun to see Azeris, like in this video, dance yeah, yeah. to the fact that Pashinyan won. Right. And then there's word from, again, a very close friend that's in Armenia uh, that there's video footage. Perhaps we can find it at some point of Aliyev, of Aliyev, laughing, smiling, um, and obviously very happy that Pushinian won. And again, to try to be objective about it, why would he be? Maybe because Greg, why would Greg Rich? Why would Aliyev be happy that Pushinian has won? Well, because, because he is on his way to implementing all nine points of the capitulation agreement. That's number one. Number two, he weakened the Armenian military to the point that there's no generals. Number three, there's a thousand Azeri troops in Armenia, and that was never once something that Pashinyan uh, raised. And number four, 
Armenians lost 6,000 or so fellow Armenians in a war that was like dubiously orchestrated. And no matter how we dumb it down, guys, this is something I've been telling people. Let's say, let's say even Pashinyan loses, right, this election. I am ashamed that even one Armenian voted for him. I'm going to say that now. Right. Why am I saying this? Right. Because you could have done anything you want. You, you could have not, not, you could have voted for everything but him. You could have voted for Gagi Tsarukyan if you well, wanted. You didn't have okay? to vote for Kocharyan if you yeah. didn't join. No, him. But, but hundreds of thousands of Armenians, where I'm not going to like, you know, even if Kocharyan overturns the elections, I would be more than happy. Hundreds of thousands of Armenians voted for Pashinyan, and that is a fact. That yeah. is something that really bothers me. Right. Now, look, and look. that because those hundreds of think about it, those hundreds hmm. of thousands of Armenians essentially voted against the livelihoods of 150,000 Armenians in Artsakh, whose whose fate is dangling in the wind. Right. Those, uh, oh, those I mean, hundred thousand Armenians. Sorry, guys, I'm going to I'm going to push this through voted against seeing a thousand soldiers uh, uh foreign soldiers genocide loving nation soldiers in armenia and said nah i hate coach adam because yeah. because of a because of a boogeyman that is the 1990s okay you know right right right, right. we'll have to get into that another time rich you're gonna say something because, yeah, no, we're, I think we're well, I mean, look, the safety and security of your borders and your nation, uh, I would think is a top priority right now. Uh, but it doesn't appear that that's how people voted. Um, and again, just just by looking, I'm trying, I'm really trying to be objective and not look at it as I'm anti Pashinyan. It's we can see what has transpired under Pashinyan's watch. Greg, you've been saying it almost every episode. Rich, we've been talking about it. Like we're witnessing what's transpiring under Pashinyan's watch. Well, so you might consider a change, perhaps. But go ahead, man. Sorry. Well, yeah, I mean, a rational person. Look, it depends on what the intended outcome is. If we, if, 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 if how do I put this? Uh, part of part of the fear around Pashinyan and what has happened since this war. The undercurrent of, well, if you were going to sign off on getting rid of Artsakh anyway, which he'd wanted to do since before he was elected, and then played that out, why did all these kids have to die because of it? Why did it, why did you have to do that? Because you couldn't legitimately get rid of that land without people uprising unless there was a war. Just like you couldn't consolidate power or become what I think is supposed to happen. And Greg, we have some other content that we're going to share that that is potentially about that. But here's my overarching point. I have this suspicion that if Armenia doesn't watch it, and if the Armenians in Armenia do not watch it, Armenia will become essentially a Turkish county that is regulated by Turkey and Azerbaijan in a pan-Turkic state. And so this election is not about Kocharyan or Sarkisian. It is about independence. And so these people are trying to exchange these temporary, listen, I want peace right now. I get it. I, I, I understand. Uh, maybe I don't live in the same place that you guys live, and I don't live under the same threat that you live. But overall, I, I think I understand uh, at least some of the threat there. But right. the reality is, is that you are exchanging temporary and fleeting uh, peace, which is not going to last for the long-term oppression that is sure to come with the wrong people in charge. Mm, very well said. Well said, well said. Very well said. Yeah, and then we could touch and, on and, uh, Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Greg, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, and then, well, I was gonna you know, take a second and address some of the things that are being hurled at us in the diaspora from the people living in Armenia, uh, mostly diasporans living in Armenia. But you can't sit on the sideline and ignore everything that Richard just said, everything that David just said, everything. That, and these are not our opinions. These are facts. OK, you will become the vilayet of, uh, of Turkey when we open up these borders as one of the next steps that's going to happen soon. Our markets are not going to be are not protected. They're going to be flooded with cheap Azeri vegetables on the right side and cheap Turkish trinkets on the left side you know what i mean Which, and by it's going to be they... justified by saying that we voted for it yes yes 
Yeah. Now, but keep in mind whether it's smoke and mirrors, I don't know. But uh, a six-month ban was Stop extended it, David. I'm sorry on Turkish you, goods. I'm just saying that happened. That did happen. That, yeah. Yes, it happened. But what is, what good is the six-month ban? Right. No, it's I know. Temporary. I know. I know. And even yeah. then, it's it's well, like. The, the fear is what other can we look at the amount of concessions we've seen happen in the last seven months, eight months. But my fear is what more, what additional concessions are we going to see now with this new parliament? That's well, we know place? this is, this is what I said yeah. as hundreds of thousands of Armenians selfishly voting to not give a damn about Artsakh because what potentially can happen next is that they're going to start demarcating the borders to the way that Azerbaijan wants it. Already it's clear that that's right. how it's going to happen. And a prime minister of Armenia is going to declare that Artsakh is no longer a contested area uh, vying for its ability and desire to be with Armenia. Or to self-determine. Yeah, self signed, sealed, delivered. End of story. You just betrayed another 150,000 people. And hundreds of thousands of Armenians voted for that. That is undisputable. You want to tell me, oh, it's bad. Oh, it's great. We can one day analyze how good the economy under Pashinyan is. COVID or not, I don't care. But the, the evidence overwhelmingly shows that there's actually been zero major changes. Okay. And lastly, with everybody loving all this, you know, fanfare around um, restaurants popping up and cafes, let me remind you, you cannot run a country and an economy of a nation on cafe on, on, on the on the industry of cafes. Okay. Yeah. That is not we need we need real industry in Armenia. Right. And I'm not I, sure anybody's I, thinking about it. I agree. I agree. I agree. I think I, but you know, but again, Greg, it's really hard to get, you know, you know, big industries when you don't know where where, where your borders are and you don't know who's Absolutely. gonna be running the show. Absolutely. It's gonna Absolutely. be really hard. You know, Absolutely. you know, where we're talking about these tech companies and in foreign investment and for what to what end when we, we don't even know what flag is going to be flying at, at this rate you know right right we have uh, yet to see they, what's going to happen now we imagine have what just, happens if you know in a basic traffic stop if we've got turks or azeris who are policing are you joking right yeah anyway so um, greg so we, there was a quote that you wanted to yeah, read yeah, if i'm if, correct so the, obviously we're talking about the political process. We're talking about the, the what do you call it? The election, the election happened, Kocharan and, and the, the, what do you call it? The ARF with Ser Sarkisian's block and uh, other opposition leaders are going to contest it. But in the meantime, there's going to be a parliament that's forming and they will join it. Uh, Kocharan himself said he may or may not be actually, so, so the idea is this, your party then selects the people that are gonna be MPs inside the parliament, right? And I know Ser Sarkisian won't be one, and I believe uh, Coach Haran won't be one either, but his party will be represented, and he's the leader of the party. So it, it, that's the way the parliamentarian stuff works, right? Um, there is a quote saying what, 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 what he believes the next steps are. Uh, <clears throat> he says, and uh, this is his kind of summar summarizing his spirit, and uh, I agree with it. Uh, at least the man is holding the flag up high. He says, yes, we are heading towards a total victory. You know, we have taken control of the first trenches where we are required to reinforce our positions to secure a full victory in the future, meaning that first step is taken. OK, we participated in snap elections, however bad they were, and we've gotten some sort of a result. Do you think we are entering the parliament just for mandates? No, of course not. Of course, we're aspiring for power to assume responsibility for the state. This is our aim. The former president said that the issues will do will keep dominating their agenda as long as the incumbent authorities remain in the helm of the state. They pose a direct hazard to the Republic of Armenia. That's what their activity over the entire past period has practically demonstrated. They pose a real hazard and threat, and that threat must be eliminated. Right. I appreciate that because at least that shows some semblance of a desire for security absolutely now, like we just talked about we just talked about all the threats that we've seen right over the current uh, administration's time go ahead man sorry yeah now obviously we'll we'll transition into the next phase which is the uh the what do you call it? one there's a photo that floated up on instagram and on facebook of 
yet another president of a, of a, of, of a republic, Araik, the president of Artsakh, in the ele- in the campaign headquarters of Pashinyan's My Step Alliance, yeah. seemingly very very jubilant on the eve of the of the so-called victory, right? Right. That immediately spawned a uh, what do you call it? Massive massive protests in 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 Stepanak here, the capital of Artsakh, ongoing and not letting go. There was one one immediately the day after Monday. There was multiple on Tuesday. And David, you notice that those things are they're they're, they're continuing. It's it, there's no there's no exactly there's day it. two. Um, and yeah, I, so I first learned of this from our friend Lika Zakarian from Civilnet. Uh, she's still in Stepanaka. She's still in Artsakh. She's doing great work out there. She tweeted that protests had started, protesting Araik, the, like you said, the president of of Artsakh. And but it was clear it, it was it wasn't clear it was vague about why they were protesting they were protesting it it just said uh, right Rich that they were protesting that um, because of like you just said Greg because of Araik's presence at Pashinyan's headquarters in Yerevan I was trying to understand why okay no, yeah that's I yeah. saw the picture I saw the article and then as right. soon as I went to click on it the thing refreshed and I lost it I couldn't find it so it no was no it's okay. It's okay. No, it's no, okay. no, no. Uh, I'm, talking, I'm not talking about here. I'm talking about in general, so that I could share it here. Yeah. Right. So, so there was something on Armenia report as well today. The protests have continued to second day. They are now doing a hunger strike as well. Rich, thank you for informing us about that as well. Mm-hmm. And there's a quote from one of the representatives there. The reason that they are doing this, the quote: "The man who occupies the seat of the leader of the country, having so many defeats, disgrace under his leadership." That same man congratulates a person who signed the capitulation of Artsakh, referring to Pashinyan. So this is referring to Araik visiting Pashinyan. Both of them lost the war, and yet they are celebrating together. So that's where this protest is. Sounds it's a, is guys, it's a low point for our nation. And uh, um, I'll take this time to, what do you call it, interject and say, and, uh, like, so obviously, so one thing was the, yes, I feel for these people. As a matter of fact, I I don't know, man. I feel the future is in Artsakh, however doomed as it seems. Because A, uh, I can't believe that hundreds of thousands of Armenians voted against Artsakh. B, I can't believe the shadowing effect that Kochara on the election campaign in terms of what what he what what he represented it seemed like everything was always about the man's past and one particular notion when my friend caught it uh, it was a guest on our show here he called he goes check this out somebody just complained to me about kocharyan and how bad it was in the 90s that my family had to leave in 1994 because there was no electricity well my god that's five years prior to kocharyan actually becoming president in 99 it seems to me that everything that was negative about the, the, the Armenian situation in the 90s was pinned on Kocharan. Well, for sure. Yeah. That's what you do because you know what? Look, 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 here's the deal. The, the, this is proven to be true in Armenia. It's proven to be true here in America. And it's proven to be true everywhere, which is as long as you say it, you don't have to back it up because people are going to record it in their head whether it's true or not. Even if you walk it back and you say, "Well, we're going to issue a retraction because that statement was bullshit," we're not going to. You know what? You know what's going to happen? People have already recorded it and they're going to believe it no matter what. They they believe what they want to believe, not what is true or factual. That is the way it works, dude. I mean, that they they were doing that to Biden before he even took office. They were blaming stuff on Biden before he even took office. Like, mm-hmm. it's just the way that politicians work. And the problem, I think the larger problem here is that the public, doesn't matter what country you were in, the public is so mired by financial issues to try and keep their family together, to try and live their lives, that they don't have the time to sit down and say, let's see, right. what did he say? Was it 95 or 99? Right. They're not going right. to know. They're just going to go, yeah, it's Coach Audience's fault. Mm-hmm. Right. It wasn't even, you know. The other sad reality, and I guess I think it would be a good segue, guys, if it's okay to the Azeris uh, still on our lands. This could be a reality from what I, I'm some group chats I've seen, and Greg, you seem to agree with this. 
it's very sad to hear this, but that people in villages or other parts of the country, they're not going to be, and Rich, this directly relates to what you were just saying. They're not going to be as concerned about concessions or his areas on lands as long as it doesn't impact their territory or their. And that territory. is, and that, thank you very much. And that really brings us to point number one, actually, of the Armenian nation. It's the feudality, the feudal, the clan-like mentality that we all have. It's, the, it's what happened to the Bakretsis when they came to a starving Yerevan. Yes, Yerevansis, you were starving, but Bakretsis were refugees and were kind of uh, always uh, told that the, the, the woes of Yerevansis was because all these refugees from Baku came. It's the... Pashinyan saying we need to cleanse Armenia of Artsakhsis in this 2008 in, in March. Okay. It's, it's this clan, it's the, it's the feudal. It's like, as long as in my plain sight, everything's okay. I don't, I don't care about the greater, you know what I mean? Well, and I'll tell you, Greg, this, and David, this may be a little bit of a diversion, but on this point, I think it needs to be said. And so forgive me if I take up two minutes on this, but, but here's the deal. I think, that comes from centuries, Greg, centuries of being ruled by other people encoded in our DNA structure to be more of a, hey, look, I just wanna be okay. I just wanna be okay as long as my section's okay. I know I'm an Armenian and I know I've got an affinity towards the greater nation, but Armenia has been ruled over by other people for centuries. And this is but the you, first but, time right, right, in modern right. history where we've had a republic that has only been around since the 1990s. Mm -hmm. All right? So it's a fledgling, I mean, a, a small right. thing that we're dealing with. But this is how you lose a country. I understand that. No, and I'm telling agree, you, so the, the reason you guys... is because we, we don't have it in our, in our makeup to, to live on our own without somebody else. So we're making deals with people one way or another just to stay alive. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't disagree, but also once it transpires into the diaspora, that doesn't end. Rich, how many spats did you have with fellow Armenians? How many times did I get, uh, you know, run over by, you know, parties that I'm now supporting? You know what I mean? Like, right. it's just on and on and I on know. and on. I know. David's I been know. like, you know, beheaded by people that, you know, seemingly were okay with him five minutes ago. You know, it is it is really, really we have it's holding us back it's holding we have us a back, guys. we have a cultural growth that has to happen there has got to be a transition from the caterpillar into the butterfly at some point and that i'm sorry takes a load of work a yeah. lot of work and and i can i can testify i have legitimate pictures of of armenians saying to other armenians i would rather have something of lower quality now, then wait five years for something for higher quality, because that's what they want. They just want it to be done with immediately. And that mentality is what is gonna make us a, a Turkish suburb. Mm -hmm. It's what lost us the Western uh, part of Armenia, and we're gonna lose what's left of it because of it. And I wish it wasn't that way. But we got to quit stabbing each other in the back. We got to quit effing each other over. We got to quit spinning things for one for a temporary gain, and that goes for all of us. And I'm not talking yeah, about. Yeah. I'm not pointing yeah. at any, anyone specific, and not least of all right. anybody who's watching this. But I think culturally, there's something to be said about that. Because right. what what is it that that, 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 that we've said that it, it's the Turks amongst the Armenians, the 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 the, the, the ones that play like they're, they're Armenians. Yeah. Yeah, Gadigan Nerdes said it's the Turks within Armenia that are going to be, or it's the Turk-like mentality in Armenia right. that is going to be the undoing of our nation. So otherwise, otherwise we're unstoppable, and I believe that. I believe. Yeah, that. I mean, there because you know we, we, you know the the you know he's the quote of Sorayan about about you know try and kill us, try and, you know, because once we see each other out in public, we're going to make a new Armenia immediately. There's something beautiful about that and absolutely true. But then there's this overarching cultural arc that I don't know how we get through. I just don't know how we get through it. Yeah. And it's evidenced by things like what happened in Artsakh. It's mm -hmm. embarrassing to be out here, the three of us, working so hard every week, 
not only every night, but every week, every month to try and produce this show, to collate the news, to try and bring it out to people, to raise the alarm, to be, be involved in advocacy, and then have this garbage happen that's like, are you fucking kidding me? Are you kidding me? Seriously? It's, yeah. it's embarrassing. Yeah, and uh, there's actually, uh, we don't have to look further than our neighbor to see what happens. And Rich, you don't have to queue up that video. It's okay. I'll just, I'll just explain. You don't need to see, uh, you don't need to visualize what's going to happen to Armenia. You just need to go to Batumi and Georgia to see what will happen to a nation that is essentially opening itself up to Azerbaijan and Turkey. Do you know that today, Tiflis can't say nothing against Ankara or Baku? I mean, they can probably protest things and say things, but fiscally, economically, they're so tied in. Yeah. And that is the example of what Turkey wants to do to us. And and I will not let this be a thing. Thousands of Armenians voted for it and thousands of diasporans from the West. You know who you are because I know who you are that are OK with it. Well, we've tried Russia. Now let's try something else. Quote that's been said to me. What you want to you want to uh, you want to leave. Yeah, you want to see uh, you and but there, but but there is a difference between us and Georgia in relations to Turkey and Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan didn't fight two bloody wars with Georgia, and Turkey did not genocide Georgia. Okay, but but for us to be integrated into those two countries, that's the lowest of the low. And for any Armenian to want that, I'm sorry, you're like you need to be out of the gene pool. I said it. Okay, guys. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, there, so so you know what, guys? There's a lot. Obviously, this is a hot issue because it's not just about an election. This is about the future of the this country. nation, the country, yeah, the and of course the nation along with it. Because as Armenia goes, so does the diaspora. We have to. We're 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 you know, many of us are riveted to it because that's because we are. Um, I'm not sure what you want to bring up next because uh, there's but, we have a lot of material that we could still cover. Um, obviously, the hot button is still the, um, the, 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 the Azeris on Armenian territory. Let's, let's touch on that real quick. Let's touch yeah. on that real quick because uh, what's happening now is Armenia is asking for more Russian peacekeepers. Uh, Russian troops are going to be deployed in Genhak Unique, which again is right near Lake Sevan. There are already Russian soldiers in Sunik, the southern region, and we know that there's many thousands of Russian soldiers in Artsakh right now. So as you said, Rich, earlier, we keep saying it, Greg, the essentially the only people that are guaranteeing Armenia's security right now uh, is Russia and these Russian peacekeepers. You're going to so, see something else, guys. I'm going to I'm gonna predict this. And David, remember when you, and you said, like, I hate when you predict things, Greg. Because um, they're usually true. Uh, Pashinyan is going to try to leverage once, you know, it's going to be a couple of months past, right? He's going to try to posture in a way that he, he can get rid of the Russian troops in Armenia proper, which is suicide. Well, he's, yeah, we he, already know. He, he, yeah, he's going towards, towards, he's going for suicide, right? right? So uh, this army chief of staff uh, is uh, his name, I'm looking it up right now, his name is uh, Davitian. It's his last name, but he's saying that he confirmed that there is still 1,000 Azeri forces in Armenia. He said that they have nothing to ask of Azerbaijan in our territory, but the talks are underway with the Russian side uh, because there are some issues and our goal is to remove the Azeri troops from our territory without clashes. So they're trying to do this in a way that there's no clashes, uh, but how long are they just gonna camp out? I can like, explain, I, yeah. I'm sorry, again, I yeah. can explain. The troops are going to dig in there until you open up the borders and build that communications link, exactly. which is just as bad as the troops, you know, taking over the country. Right. Which was one of the nine points and very puzzling to me during the campaign. Of course, it is a campaign pushing you during the campaign. There's a thank you, Richard's video of the Davidian there. Pashinyan claims on the campaign that we will never do the transit way, but wait a minute, you signed it on the capitulation November 9. So I don't understand, uh, that's something we have to follow. Um, but yeah, that's the update on the Azeris. 
in the land. Oh, actually, one other further update today, they claim that we fired at their positions. Armenia formally denied that, that we did not fire at them. So this we're, we're going to keep seeing this type of thing happen every day um, for who knows how long. As long as they're here, they're going to keep accusing us of doing things. Yeah. Right. And then do we want to touch on the foreign minister, which makes no sense? Greg, did you see that? The Azari foreign minister yeah, I did, I saying... Like yeah, this is laughable. Yeah, apparently they're ready to work on a major peace agreement with Armenia and normalize relations. I saw this come through and I just shook my head. It was like, okay, but wait a minute. It's interesting, right? This is after what? This is after June 20, they're saying this, right? I'm starting to think now, does that have anything to do with it? Does the, uh, I don't know, I hope not. Um, but we know, like you've said it, we've all said it, they, they want us gone. And off the face of the earth. I think this is um, another, you know, let's move the goalpost on them. Let's act like we want peace and then contrive some lame bullshit reason that, you know, that we get to fire on them. It's just, you know, it's, it, it's, it, this is Lucy putting out the football. These people don't want peace with us. The way they want peace is us gone. Right. They, they can't, they don't, they don't, they don't even want to acknowledge that we, existed they don't want to acknowledge any of our historical landmarks any of our culture or history nothing so what makes what you know if you if you're uneducated about this area of the world and you're uneducated about the geopolitical uh situation you're uneducated about the land and the and the people and the history then this is going to be like oh well one side wants peace and the other one is questioning it so why wouldn't they want peace well i don't know because they've been trying to kill us for millennia I don't know. Whatever. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, that's that's the current situation with the <laughs> soldiers on our lands, uh, POWs. Uh, really quickly, the parents of POWs have started new rounds of protests outside of uh, the government building in Armenia. Uh, Rich, you know, you've spoken as a parent just we can't even imagine what these people are going through. Uh, still more than 200 uh, servicemen that are that have been captured. And then, of course, you guys, morbid topic. There's many morbid topics, but bodies are still being found. Bodies of soldiers are still being found as well. Yo, yeah. we don't need to, you know, say that it's a morbid topic. The whole, like, dude, like, the future of Armenia is a morbid, no morbid topic. Yeah. It's true. I, like I'm gonna say uh, it again. I, I'd like to I've think said, of that. That's I've true. said it on platforms. No, I've said it on platforms. Thousands of Armenians, get it through your heads, voted against Tartsis. Chew on that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Greg. Like they. Uh, do you think they knowingly did that? Did they know? Absolutely. Do really. Absolutely. Yeah. It was what Richard said. It's my. It's my backyard. It's as long as this is here. Where's the pride now, man? Uh, you know, one I, day I, I, think I don't know, been... Greg. I, you know, I think the only pushback I'd offer on that is I, I wasn't there. I don't know what's in many of their hearts. I, I, I listen. If I, if I were being threatened with war constantly, I would want to do everything I could to squash that too. Not everybody has the luxury of being thousands of miles away and wishing they could go fight there. But, you know, those people lived it. And, you know, there are autotoxies who are probably just like, I just wanted the bombs to stop. Can you just, you know, like, you know. No, 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 no. What, what, what I'm saying is there's 150,000 autotoxies with their lives in the air and hundreds yeah. of thousands of Armenians voted to simply end it. Like, be like, whatever. Resettle them. Kill our talk as we know it. And Greg, um, to, to fill in the yeah. gaps there, yeah. you know, so people know the context, what you're referring to is, correct me if I'm wrong, that Pashinyan, his next step would will be that yeah. to, to yeah. stay Artsakh is part of Azerbaijan. To acknowledge, oh, no, 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 no. It won't, it won't be. It won't be in the most kind of like outright way, but it will be more like, well, you know, the this is Goris and the Armenian. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, border is right here. Once he declares that, well, already what's what's outside that border? What is it, Pashinyan? Oh, it's Azerbaijan. What's in that Azerbaijan? Oh, there's this weird little group of Armenians living all over the place, and he's gonna kind of like pitch it to the world as if like, 
you know, we'll let uh, Azerbaijan take care of its minority Armenians. And hopefully we can adhere to some kind of a OSC uh, truce. Oh, and there's also an, a Russian base there. So Russians will, will take care of it. But we Armenians don't care about it anymore because the declaration is that after you exit Goris, Armenia ends. Signed, sealed, sealed, delivered. End of story. I have, yeah, anyways. Yeah, yeah, we have to. I hope that doesn't happen, man, but but it, it seems like it's pointing that way, right? So, and then we have to see what's supposed to happen now with this transit way, and hopefully there's no other concessions of territories. Um, real quick, I mean, Greg, we talked about it in, the, in our pre-meeting that we did want to touch on this, that the Chinese president, mm. he makes news often, right, um, in the U.S., for, for other reasons, but apparently Chinese President Xi Jinping stressed that Armenia is on their one of their traditional friendly countries. If you go back, uh, what is it, hundreds or thousands of years, the Silk Road, right? Armenia was on the Silk Road. And so this appears to be the uh, Chinese president making that first uh, just the olive branch in a way, not olive branch, but reaching out in a way that's saying, hey, he's ready now to make efforts to, to raise relations with Armenia. And this is to really try to establish the, the Silk Road again is what it appears like. Right, well, yeah, China has an enormous agenda. And, you know, you know, it's often been said in other circles that, you know, uh, while the U.S. and its stock market operates in a what have you done for me this quarter, um, you know, and the Japanese are more like, what have you done for me in the past few years? Uh, the, the the Chinese operate in, in, in the decades cycle. Like, they don't care what happens this quarter. They're not right. going to sell off a few assets to make their numbers for this quarter. They're in it for the decade. They're in it for the millennium. You right. know, they're, they're in it for the long, long, long haul. So right. while everybody else is playing this, forgive me for saying it this way, but Chinese checkers, they're playing chess. They're playing a long, long game. So right. they may not be taken seriously by some people, but these people can build, uh, you know, enormous bridges almost instantly. They can lay, I mean, yeah. we can say whatever we want about, 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 you know, what we think they're doing, but what they are yeah, actually uh, doing is they, huge. When the Wuhan, uh, what do you call it? COVID started in Wuhan and they needed to have uh, their, their, the their, hospitals. They, they had just... eight hospitals built in seven days. Okay. Wow, wow. I yeah. heard that. So like, you know, but here's uh, here's my two cents on China, right? And again, this is a, a little pause. Armenians need to understand that we are antithetical to the West. And everything that Armenia is, is actually a proponent and a stopgap from a lot of Western things transpiring to the detriment of other larger parties. And as smart people, we should be playing into that. And not like CivilNet will try to tell us we should be playing into the Europeans and, and Americans. Well, in reality, Europe and America, NATO predominantly under the guide of America, is very much happy that this trans-Turkic bullshit project transpires why because it'll put it'll do three things immediately it'll screw russia out of the caucasus it'll completely destabilize iran uh with its azeri population in the north and the the the, the pan-turkic project stop at kazakhstan you know what i mean like again it's about greg and his maps and knowing the way that regions well there's a eastern part of a western part of China that is predominantly Muslim Turkey populated, and we've heard about the atrocities that are happening there, right? But nonetheless, for the geopolitical point of the discussion, uh, if we can step away from the atrocious incidents in 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 we in the uh, what do you call it Uyghur uh, populated territories of China, those are Turkic people, right? And Turkey will have some kind of a soft power influence on them. And the West would love nothing more than to see that happen. Okay. Absolutely. So, and there's again in this humongous, humongous geopolitical tango or wrestling, there's this tiny Armenia that doesn't seem to understand its value and the amount of influence we could be uh, uh, exerting on geopolitics if we just pick ourselves up and play things the right way. If we understand the Western Armenians, me, you, Richard, 
However, we would love that, you know, Yerevan is be more like Sacramento and San Leandro. It's actually more like Moscow and Beijing. Okay. Right. And it has mm-hmm. more and has more connections with Tehran than Paris. Absolutely. End of story. You know, Greg, that's a great point. And what people need to realize that, yes, this if the Silk Road comes back, that's going to be really good for Armenia and Armenia's economy, right? But it's going to piss off the West. It's going to piss off the West. And so this is yet another thing. And thank you to Sosi, Sosi Mansouri, and uh, our, our loyal follower of ours. Thank you so much. And to Solik uh, as well for your comments. But Sosi brings us a good point. Great double whammy, right? Counting China, she might be referring to Russia as well, right? Another reason for the U.S. Uh, has set us up for destruction, right? Absolutely. They don't want they don't want the Silk Road back Absolutely. either. Absolutely. So Absolutely. they want they want NATO's interest, and, not and, and, anyone else. And one more point I forgot to mention in my on, on long talk: there is in reverse nothing that we offer for the West. Exactly. Nothing. Exactly. Us being gone is beneficial to their grand plan. Uh, but because they are democratically seeming, it's it's not like we're going to be erased off the map. We're going to be called, we're going to be turned into, Richard, to quote you, into a what? A uh, Turkish uh, suburb. Yeah. Or, or a, a Turkish county. county. Yeah, a Turkish county where yeah. Pashinyan or whoever the next prime minister will be will have to ask Ankara and Baku if it's okay to go this way or that way. Yeah, I hope not, man. I hope not. So, I hope not. Well, I mean, you know, I hope not too. But you know, there's a couple things that play, there's so much at play here. You know, when when you hear rhetoric out of Armenia, basically, you know, crapping all over the diaspora, like, well, then they should be here. Blah 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 blah. blah. It's like, well, you know what? I didn't choose to be born here. I cho- but I did choose to continue to participate as an Armenian because I guarantee you that my life's velocity is much faster if I if I don't if I don't adopt the name Kazanjian and I just go by Rich Kaz like other people call me. When I go by Rich Kaz, I'm a super high velocity guy. When it's Richard Vartan Kazanjian, it's slow because I don't understand that. And my opportunities are different. Why do you think Andre Agassi changed his name? Why do you think Cher changed her name? Why do you think all these important Armenians that we consider Armenian were like, yeah, okay, well, oh, I got, yes, I'm Armenian, but I, I really have this other life here too. Because, because it is faster and more beneficial on an individual level. You start contributing to Armenia and it gets to be a pain in the ass it really does and i don't mean to be mean about that but it's like we can't come to consensus on stuff and this kind of stuff is happening regularly so just, it to, is... just to bring a just to bring a country into the into the mix um I, i'm you know i'm not a fan of it, it uh, openly uh but israel right now is a big time fan of uh is a big ally of the united states but did you know that in its formation originally israel uh was also trying to uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, gain the favors of Soviet Union in the early days, because that nation understood that I need to do what is necessary to survive. That's right. That's to right. survive. And we got like the civil net Armenians, as I would like to call them, um, telling me that, oh, our future is with the West. Are you kidding me? I can't. Be. Why? Because <laughs> there's going to be more restaurants. Yeah. You guys, what's, what's, the like, Greg, like, are you, you nuts? Could we, if we dumb it down, no, I've dumb it down is the wrong way to put it. If we yeah. simplify it, you guys correct me if I'm wrong on this, and then we can move on, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. uh, but thank you. We got uh, mm-hmm. lots of great viewers watching live. Thanks so much, guys, for watching. I think we watch whoever's watching uh, um, on demand as well. But guys, we cannot move to the West when our main enemies if you will, or the people that want us gone Mm -hmm. are the second largest power in NATO. And the people that we depend on our security on are Russia and Iran. And I mean, economic security as well. Right. So there's NATO, which is Turkey, Turkey, and then vis-a-vis Azerbaijan, where then you have Armenia that whether we want to like it or not, we need, we rely on Russia and Iran, the two nations that, what, how many sanctions does the U.S. have on both of those nations combined, right? Um, so, and, so. and as a matter of fact, yes, uh, absolutely, absolutely. And if we are a smart nation, we need to go into the direction of what will keep us alive, okay? We can pivot okay. later, you know what I mean? But this, like, seeming desire to have this 
neoliberal Western cookie at the detriment of Artsakh first, Sunnis second, and eventually Armenia. I'm sorry, you cannot sleep on a country's existence and then go, oh, I was wrong. Um, oh, oops, God. you can't do that. <laughs> when the, when the enemy is essentially telling you what they're going to do, they're like line item. And they oh, can yeah, act with not only them. impunity, but with support. <laughs> not just impunity, but with international support, either through, uh, you know, some countries being hands off or absolute involvement, they're getting supported. So, but yeah. the thing is, here is what I want to bring up, and this is not a point that we've uh, we've been uh, uh, not a bullet point. This is something I wanted to send you and you and David on one of the chats on Facebook. There's what I'm seeing is that there is a reawakening within the diaspora of a lot of people whether it's they finally read up on what is Artsakh sorry we're a genocided nation disinformation and being removed from the center is something that happens in a, when we're so far removed they're finally getting educating themselves well this should have been done through 30 years ago but better late than never right and uh, like one gentleman uh uh wrote on the on this uh Survivor of the Armenian Genocide, the group that Richard no longer will ever be part of. No. But it's okay, it's okay. But this is at least gives me an idea to uh, the gentleman goes, is the blind, blank blank the only uh, lobby group the Armenians have in the USA? And he puts that question mark. And what that then leads into a conversation is like, there is like an awakening of a lot of Armenians in the diaspora thinking that hey, we need to do a better job lobbying. And what that gentleman actually says, and I looked in his bio, this guy is as American as can be. He has a Asian American wife even, but his last name is Armenian and he definitely is an Armenian descendant of a genocide survivor as we all are. What he's saying is he goes, hey man, wake up. We have a billions of dollars in a base in Turkey. They don't care about us, meaning Washington, DC. I think Armenians need to start thinking that way. Well, I, you, you know I'm not going to disagree with you on that, Greg, but I can tell you from my own personal experience, living less than 20 blocks away from the, the California state capitol and effectively being screwed over by one of the primary, uh, you know, Armenian political organizations that I was working for and chairman of, like, you, you, we just don't work together well. Remember what our guest said the other day about about how you know we we we're really good at individual sports like tennis, wrestling, chess, but you don't see us playing baseball or football or cricket or 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 like or we have one good we have a couple good soccer stars, but but but, but our team sucks. Our team sucks. We yeah, have good you know why? Because it's a psychology. It's a psychology. And 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 I will go on record and I listen, you know that as much as dedicated as I am to this nation, I don't make a whole lot of friends there. Most of Southern California won't even acknowledge me. That's fine. I don't care because I know what I do and I know what I work for and I know what I'm committed to. But I know that this nation has just done itself a, a lot of disservices by the way it treats each other. And when we are in a position where we are irritated by another Armenian getting ahead or, you know, or somehow gaining some sort of like status and we're not completely supportive, that's a problem. That's a problem. Right. You know, uh, I, you know, I mean, I, we could go on for hours on this stuff. So, so yeah. you know, anyways, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot that could be said, but right now we are in a perilous situation. And the fact that I'm, I'm glad you and David brought this one point up. Um, one of the things leading up to the to the to the um, uh, election was what was hurled at all the diasporans on various platforms, Facebook including, uh, Facebook Live, Arash Media including. If you don't live here, you should not have an opinion. Wow. That's wow, wow, wow. Sure. That cannot be further from the truth. It's actually the same click of people that then has an opinion on things globally all the time from palestine to maga even let's we'll go left and right here um you know what i mean like everything um but when it comes to like oh i need to fly to armenia to have an opinion on what's happening there the thousands and thousands of dollars we've been raising the thousands and thousands calls we've been making that's just you know you you know just 
shut up and sit down kind of thing. Only when you live in Armenia, you can have an opinion on what's happening. Well, can you can you fathom to think about this way? Could it be that from afar, we can see some things a little bit better than inside the hustle and bustle of a nation going through war? Doesn't matter. I just want to say this to anybody that's curious. You will never stop me from well, supporting Armenia right. from Mars, from uh, the moon, from right. anywhere. What's not fair about that comment, and then perhaps we can move on, is that it's who are they? Like, Greg, Rich, you said it. Like, we didn't choose to be born where we are. Okay, there's that. But we were born where we are, and we do more work for the nation than many people that live in other parts of the world or that live in Armenia, perhaps. Well, pause, pause okay. right there. So predominantly people that are saying that right. predominantly are the so-called repats that went and moved there. So actually, the let's call them former diasporans. Okay, okay. And I yeah. give them credit for that because I, I don't have the guts to do that. I'll say that. I'll be honest. Do I want to spend more time there? Do I want to have business or it's, property it's, there? It's, yes. But what I'm, what I'm saying but, is it's narrow-sided. It's narrow-sided. I agree. I agree. It's you not never, fair. You will not never fair. see a Lebanese person in Beirut say, hey, butt out when there's fundraisers for Beirut in like in the diaspora. Exactly. exactly. You know, exactly. it's because this this mentality is part and parcel of what Richard just said. It's just it's, it's a different thing. It's whether Armenian versus Armenia, diaspora versus uh, formerly diasporans versus current diasporans. And right. then in reality, we're just all assimilating, genocided and losing Armenia. Thanks. Congrats. Right. Well, okay, so there are a couple more topics to discuss. We actually have a handful of different topics, but what we're going to do is we're going to spend the next few minutes talking about some some stuff that is still close to the neighborhood in Armenia and Artsakh and some of the relevant players. And once we get done with that, I'm just going to throw out a handful of our topics that we've co that David and, and the rest of the other we've collated just to put together for you. Uh, and I'm going to encourage you to not only read them. Uh, but to share, tell your friends about us, follow us on Facebook. Remember, uh, we're going to put up links not only for this stuff, but also how to follow us on YouTube as well. Uh, viewership is really important to us because obviously we want to make, uh, you know, other people know what's going on and have more interaction. The more that you tell your friends, the more we're going to get comments and the more interaction we can have and the more dialogue we can have and the more people will learn. Uh, and that's really what we're trying to do. So um, the, the next thing is, of course, Putin. Right. We've got a, a small. Yeah. Yeah. So he's had some phone calls. He had a phone call with uh, actually all of the leaders of the region. Right. So he's had a phone call with Pashinyan, Erdogan and Aliyev. Uh, he called Pashinyan to congratulate him. He emphasized the importance of implementing the provisions of the November 9 and subsequent January 11 agreements, uh, which essentially are asserting Russia's agenda on the region. Right. So look, he's he's flexing a little bit now. Um, under the guise of congratulating. Um, but there's a little bit more to it with the call to Aliyev. I'm going to put this out here, guys. Again, these are all items we could literally spend entire shows on. But he had a call with Aliyev, right, to discuss Artsov. But in that call, there is reason to believe, you guys, Greg, maybe you can educate everybody really quickly. What country or what pro former country or former territory was Azerbaijan under starting 1918? What were they a part of in 1918? Yeah, they were part of the Russian Empire. Russian the Soviet Empire. Union, right? So. Soviet Union. Before 1918, it was the, the Russian Empire. So there you Russian go. Empire, Soviet Union, yeah. 1918. Azerbaijan didn't exist prior to 1918, right? Remember, Coca-Cola is oh. older. Coca-Cola is older than Azerbaijan. But look, guys, this call, and again, I have insight from people that are in Armenia. This call was more than just about, or, or could have been, or likely was, or maybe subsequent calls or prior calls between Putin and Aliyev are a lot, are very much about, hey, you got everything you wanted. Now you need to come back to me, basically. Okay. So, Greg, I'm not sure if you have, if you've heard anything about that. Yeah, I heard well, some, I mean, I mean, I heard no, some no, rumbling about that. Just, we can wrap this, the, this portion this way. It's yeah. that, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's exactly, ex exactly what we, what we know. Russia, as much of an ally to us as it is, it's our only out. Sorry, guys. Sorry, the ZBLNet generation. Sorry. 
Um, Zebulon and Russian is actually garbage, sorry, and Armenians. Uh, um, and, but Russia plays like as the kind of the, the, the guy in the region. We are their, their former, you know, uh, you know, constituents in every possible way. You know what I mean? And, it'll, and it's not necessarily two-siding the situation with, a, with Armenia, but it's also trying to establish its dominance over Azerbaijan, maybe even kind of like, you know, posturing to Turkey, like, hey, bro, this is still my area, right? right. Unfortunately, where I'm concerned is that I don't know if Russia understands that 30 years have passed and thousands of years prior to that, hundreds of years prior to that, Azeris and the Turks, I mean, they're, you know, it's like a, you know, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a thing. Rich, Rich, you're muted, bro. You're muted. You're muted. Uh, but Okay, I'll put it to you like this, guys. Uh, you, Azerbaijan is going to do to Turkey exactly what Turkey has been doing between the Arab world and Europe, trying to play both sides. Hey, uh-huh. hey, Arabs, we have we have this particular brand of Islam that we want to promote that we've got the big arm of, right? And then, oh, by the way, Europe, uh, we're a pretty spicy area that you can come vacation in. Why don't you spend your money here? And oh, by the way, the West, we want to ca- we'll help you contain Russia. I mean, they are playing all sides, and they have been for decades. And Azerbaijan is going to do the same thing with Russia. They're going to play them and go, okay, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, they, they, they know that they really want their daddy to be Turkey because they want to be part of this pan-Turkic empire. So right. they're going to do whatever they can to say and do whatever Russia uh, a little bit. But you know what? This is all a big arm wrestling match over who has some flex in the Caucasus. And the Russians are losing. Sadly. Hard. Like literally. If the, Russians, hard. if the Russians, if the Russians lose us, this is why I, I mean, like, I know Putin congratulated Pashinyan, but like, it's tough, man. You know that this guy is a pro-Western shill. You know what I mean? Like, and it's a really, really, really tough situation for Russia to even. If Russia loses the Caucasus, well, forget about Armenia. We're done. We're we're gonna patent the term. We are uh, Turkey's uh, county, a uh, suburb of yeah. Turkey. Um, no, 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 it's not funny, yeah, right? Yeah, because know. it's gonna be like it's gonna happen to Awful. us, and so it's happening to Georgia, right? Slowly, even worse, so right because they genocided us a hundred years ago. But it's okay. The Zebelnet generation seems to think it's all good. Yeah, maybe um, they'll make a sports team out of us. Absolutely, yeah. We'll we'll go to the Euro- European uh, Championships. Um, but Russia's like days in the Caucasus are all over. There is no longer an anti force to the West in the Caucasus, and also it's, it spells a lot of trouble for Iran as well. That's right. why I, I don't understand why they're not more heavy-handed in this, right. in this matter. I don't know. But there's a lot of changes happening in Russia. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know how they could be. Happening. I know they would, they would probably want to be, but I don't know how they could be considering they have their own problems. Uh, well, this is their problem. And that's that's actually yeah. our job to explain it to them. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, and, yeah, yeah. And, and no, no, absolutely. This is. Oh, this I is don't what disagree we, with you. I don't yeah. disagree with you. This is what yeah. geopolitics is, guys. This is how Rich. this is how people would need to operate and understand to operate. So yeah, Greg, Greg, if if they lose if Arme- if they lose Armenia, they mm-hmm. being Russia. Yeah, they have no more presence in the in, in the Caucasus in the is, yeah. is gone. It's now yeah. Turkey, right? Yeah. So we need it, but basically, this relationship between. Putin and Aliyev, we have to keep an eye on because right now, like you're pointing out, Rich, Greg, you too, and uh, uh, Kirk. Uh, Kirk, thanks for watching, man, and for commenting. Um, he's a good friend from Arizona. The they're <laughs> I'm losing my train of thought, guys. I'm sorry, but the the <laughs> oh my god, I'm losing my train of thought. Okay, guys. okay I'll, we, I'll, have, I'll, we, no, we have okay, to watch I'll, that, that relationship. No, no, it's okay. I'll fill in. Uh, not only, not only, why is Azerbaijan, why is Russia flirting with Azerbaijan, right? Uh, for various reasons. But notice what else are Azerbaijan. No, 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 no. no, no, no. They, he wants them back. But what we're seeing, he, he, Putin wants Aliyev to understand that no, 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 no. You're not with Erdogan. You're with me. But right now, what we're seeing is like we've already said it. Erdogan and Aliyev, they're. They have a nice little bromance going on. 
Yeah, and, because, and, because also Erdogan energy, has him convinced. An energy and energy rerouting that's happening right now. For sure. Yeah, Europe For is sure. this, this, this crybaby that has zero energy, right? And it's getting all of its oil and gas yes. resources from elsewhere because it's a, it's a beautiful wine country, but has nothing else to offer for itself in terms of uh, uh, energy, right? Um, and uh, Azerbaijan essentially, by supplying Europe, is the alternative to Russia. Okay, so it's tough, man. It's so like, yeah, what? imagine, Russia needs imagine to watch if you're out. gonna go, you're gonna go on holiday, and you're gonna go to Turkey, and hey, we'll just go all the way through over to Baku. We can go to the Caspian too. How great is that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, like for sure. And and you know, Erdogan has got as has got. Aliyev convinced that if if they keep this strong arm bromance together, the pan Turkic state will mean that they've got a huge block that they're just that that it's not just Turkey containing in Russia for NATO. It's now Turkey all the way into the rest of the stands, knocking knocking on China's back door. Right, yeah. right. So this is all about the money and the economic. It's just this is a. A crazy Wait a minute. Listen, Could that be why uh, Xi Jinping is uh, calling up Armenia right now? Could that be why? Totally. Absolutely. So, so here's the thing: if this wasn't if this wasn't such a game that was detrimental to Armenia's health, because as usual, we we're in the middle of this cross area of everything. You know, we survived Alexander the Great. We survived the Greeks and the Romans and the Persians and the Ottomans and and the Russians. Uh, but you know, if it wasn't so detrimental to our well-being and our life, this would be amazing and humorous to watch. If it, if it wasn't our country in the middle of it, it would be amazing to watch. But it sucks because we have to watch this chess game where we're caught in the middle. And there is, I can't imagine one gear that isn't going to grind us wrong. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think it's horrible any way you look at it, man. Like, uh, yeah. It's hopefully no, I think yeah. I think, I think uh, if we think of us as a as an what do you call it, as a, as the, as this castle in the mountains, right? And literally, that's what Kocharan was campaigning on. That we need to fortify our borders. We need to uh, what do you call? It, we need to have transit routes, but in a different direction, north south rather right, exactly. than east west. Exactly. Exactly. You know exactly. What I mean? Yeah, between Iran, uh, uh, which apparently has been talked about for a long time. So you know what? So let's, you know, I know we've been talking for about an hour and a half, and a lot of it has been like heavy and gloomy and all this other stuff. But I want to quickly go through a couple different news articles that give us a little bit of hope, right? Often we try and end the show with something that's positive, or at least, hey, there's this one good thing happening. But I just want to remind everybody that there are some glimmers of positivity, even from within uh, the Turkish parliament itself. So David, thanks for finding this because I probably wouldn't have seen this, but this really gives me a little bit of hope. Um, and that is that we've got, um, you know, we have one Armenian uh, inside the Turkish parliament that is constantly raising the alarm about things that are going on within Turkey or nearby and basically trying to be the one voice of conscience and to say, hey, um, you know, th these things happen too. You better pay attention. Um, and so, you know, he's while this is this may not be a fun topic to talk about, the idea that there's someone within who is trying to uh, be an irritant and raise the awareness, I think, is pretty amazing. So, Palian is uh, or uh, Palian, Palian, yeah. Palian. I, 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 I always screw that up. Um, you know, has has you know been raising the alarm. Uh, about the destruction of an Armenian church in Turkey. Um, and, yet another, you know, yet another, yet another, another one. one. Yeah. Um, which, which is is awful. And you know, uh, rather than dissect that too much, we all know what has been happening for a long time. But at least he's raising the alarm. Um, we also have the Netherlands par Parliament has urged the government not to send a delegation to Baku uh, for uh, the 2020 quarter. Final. Euro, the Euro 2020 soccer That's tournament. Right. 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 Um, but finally, we have, uh, you know, who wants to talk about this one? Because this is pretty cool. I mean, this guy, this guy is, uh, you know, he's, uh, well, I mean, he's great, but I'm worried that he shouldn't be the only one. I mean, we need that next generation. of This guy, yeah, Mkhitaryan had yet another legendary goal in a different 
uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, league, which is the Italian league where he plays now. He now played in the Ukrainian, in the German, in the in the Premier League, which is the UK, and now he's in the Italian Serie A. And his goal against uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, I forget which team uh, won him the goal of the season. Um, so that was that's amazing. That's pretty awesome. Um, and he he had a similar incident in when he was in the in the Premier League when he was playing for not Arsenal but uh, Manchester United when he had a scorpion kick. Essentially, you know, um, he kicked the ball in with the, the the back of his foot. So this this guy's good. Yeah, um, Greg. It seems like he's he's really taken off on Roma, huh? It seems like it because I mean he's taking. He off had some injuries. And, he had some injuries, right? But then. Yeah, he's doing yeah. good. Uh, uh, <laughs> the, the 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 one bad thing is that the um, the coach that wasn't so uh, awesome with him in Manchester is now following him and is most likely going to be the coach in Rome, where he plays oh, no, right no, now. No. Yeah, yeah. Which is a, a legendary coach, Jose Mourinho. But I hope they uh, they see eye to eye. That's, oh that's no, cool. yeah, because that was that that was like yeah. right before he left yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the last one. Yeah. Yeah, the guy, the guy's an a hole. I don't like him. So, <laughs> so it's uh, but um, anyways, um, you guys, I guess we can wrap it up. We're way over time, but uh, thanks for everyone that's watching, right? And we can queue up what we have in store for next week, which we will have an amazing, amazing conversation with a phenomenal guest, uh, Jivan Navidisian, which is the uh, uh, the director of. A set. He's an art artist, right? He's a he's a director of an amazing, amazing like a trilogy of films called Aram Astrik Tevanik, about the life in Artsakh during the first war and after. Um, that one, I mean, the the list of awards is just innumerable, right? Um, even IMDb, the anti-Armenian <laughs> platform where a lot of Turkish trolls tank Armenian uh, films. It's a it's an eight point five out of ten. You guys, that's a lot. That's 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 that is a that is a, a um, and I was and I was given the uh, the privilege of watching some of these films. These are this is a this is a war drama, um, and he has other projects that he's going to talk to us about next Thursday, which is uh, a, you know very very relevant. Um, that's a great. project, yeah, a project relating to Artsakh, obviously this war. Um, and uh, the Velvet Revolution and how that all ties in. I'll let him explain what that is, but this is phenomenal that we even have this opportunity to speak to this guest. That's really great. Well, you know what? We're, we're I, I feel like we're really privileged and fortunate to, to have a platform, to be able to utilize it, to be able to connect with an audience, uh, to be able to get such great guests uh, and to have engaging conversation. I think that's you know, amongst the few other things that I live for, this is it. So uh, I'm just grateful for both of you guys. I'm also thankful uh, for all the people that are watching either live right now or, um, you know, soon after. Yeah, likewise. Well said. Well said, man. Likewise. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I guess I could say thanks, everybody. Uh, we'll see you next week, 9 p.m. Pacific time on Thursday. Uh, and remember to like us on Facebook if you don't haven't already. Uh, remember to follow us on uh, uh, Instagram, on Instagram, Instagram, and on the YouTube and all the other social Subscribe media, YouTube, purpers, yeah. whatever. Subscribe uh, on YouTube. Uh, right. Yeah, the show will be up uh, tomorrow on the YouTube channel. Uh, you could get there Bitly slash Adach Media, capital A, capital M. Um and yeah, thank you guys. This is great. And back our next show, by the way, will be July first. Yeah, May July. This is the last in June. All right. Um, you know, take thank care. You guys. All right, take care. Have a good night.